Georgia is the first school to repeat since Alabama did it in 2011-2012. Shannon, I know you've got a lot to say about this one. What was your biggest takeaway? This the talent level, Skip. That's what it was. I mean, it wasn't coaching. Yeah, Kirby Smart's an unbelievable coach. Got his got his start under Coach Saban. Won a couple of won lots of national championships at Alabama. Took that philosophy to Georgia. Recruit four and five stars, and they're littered with them. It was just a talent, Skip. No matter what anybody says, and I know everybody wants to represent their country and their side of the and their conference. The SEC just plays a different brand of football. Mm. There's a reason why year after year after year that conference produces more. NFL players than any other conference. And you saw it on full display last night. The four stars are just at every position. I'm not so sure how many guys from TCU could have actually started for the University of Georgia. They're just loaded. And it was just 65. Skip, they could have got 80. If they'd have left Stetson Bennett, if they'd have left the starters in, they could have got 80. The score could have been 80 to, well, 14, 79. So 79 to 7. That's what the score could have been. I mean, they put the backups in, and they're running up the up, up and down the field. Mm. It was just, I mean, it, it was embarrassing. It really was, I mean, but there's nothing you can do. That was supposed to be the two best teams. Skip, you had a college yep. football playoff, and the two best teams were supposedly played for the national championship. And we were hoping that we got games at least like the Georgia-Ohio State, something that comes down to the last second, a field goal here or a big play there and whatever. This game was over. Very early when you just when you were just watching it, mm. and I'm looking at like, mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm. the talent level, the disparity in talent was just so vast that even the casual fan could see um, Georgia is that much better than they are. Skip, it's really and and the thing is, they just retool. I mean, yeah, it looks like they might be the new Alabama. But eventually, Skip, that catches up with you like it did Alabama because these guys keep going early and you keep losing the Julios and the Calvin Ridley and, and the Amari Coopers and the Judys and this one, that one. They keep leaving early, Skip. It gets harder and harder for you to replenish. But just like Alabama, when they were on top, Skip, everybody wants to come because they see that pipeline and they see you putting that guys in the NFL. And guess what? Those boosters at the University of Georgia, they like winning now. So guess what they're going to do, Skip? They're going to fill that NIL coffers. Mm -hmm. That thing going to be running over. And them guys say, well, let me go get a piece of that mm -hmm. because we know they're going to play for SEC titles. We know they're going to play for national titles. Skip, it was just the talent, 65-7 to 7 in a national championship game, Skip. Mm -hmm. that, that's like the Super Skip. You remember those Super Bowls back in the 80s and 90s, how they used to be one-sided? They'd be... Do I? 55 10, they'd be 45 to 7. Mm -hmm. That's what it's not supposed to be that in the national championship mm. game. Your, but, your quarterback was the recipient <laughs> of several of those beatings. All of them. John I mean, Elway. The, he lost 35 10 to, uh, might have been 35 10 to uh, Washington. He yep. went 42 10 to the Giants and yep. then 55 10 to, to, to 49. Montana, yep. yeah. Yep. So, games in a, Skip, in a national championship game, this is supposed to be the two best teams. Two best teams, one shouldn't be 65-7 better no. than the other. Yet and still, <laughs> when we picked this game at the end of yesterday's show, we both said that it would be a close game and that TCU would cover the spread and yeah. it would be a good game. Yes. And we were both utterly, completely, devastatingly wrong. Wrong. Okay, so I get what you're saying about talent disparity because we've known that and we knew that going in. But on defense, Georgia had suffered and struggled of late. Yes. And the, the final score against the Ohio State was 42 to 41, Georgia. So they gave up 41 points. Right. And CJ just went up and down the field yes. on them. And it, it gave you pause. Cause for pause. Yeah, right. And, and you, you stopped cold and you said, well, now wait a second, because I watched TCU a whole lot mm -hmm. all year. And all I can tell you is there's some talent on TCU, not Georgia talent, but enough that I thought this would be a fun game to watch right. because I thought Max Duggan would do some things against them. And we did see one drive in which he did some things right. and cut the score, as you know, to 10 to 7. That was pretty much the end of that. But the point is, from what I know of these two teams, Georgia played lights out last night. Georgia cannot play better than it played. That was the best game of the year. Yes, it was. And Stetson Bennett said right after the game, this was brutal, cold execution. He said stone-cold killer mentality. 
Well, it was. They didn't miss a trick all night on either side of the ball. No. Everything they did was correct mm -hmm. all night long. The execution of it just executed TCU. Right. Meanwhile, I know TCU. I and you, know, I, you obviously watched them against Michigan. Mm -hmm. They're way better than they played last yes. night. The stage got too big right. for them right out of the box. Yeah. I couldn't recognize Max Duggan. Right. I didn't know who he was because he was the runner-up for the Heisman right. Trophy, and he deserved to be the runner-up for the Heisman. And all year long, I saw him battle his butt off and come back after comeback, albeit in the Big 12. <laughs> but he also did it against Michigan right. at a very high level. And yet, last night, I, I'm just telling you the truth. He played horribly yeah. from start to finish. Yeah. Where You know how you just have a bad day or night? He just had a bad night. Yeah. From the start, he was just off, and he got out of rhythm, and he got off kilter right away, and he couldn't get it back, no. and you could just see it in his face. He was just lost, and the harder he tried, the worse it got, yeah. and they couldn't protect him enough, but he had some time to read, and then he would, he would read and go deer in headlights, and he couldn't find it, and they would have right. a coverage yeah. sack, yeah. and it just he went down five times, and it just seemed to get worse and worse. Meanwhile, the quarterback on the other side just just played a, an all-time game. It man, was a Joe Burrow-esque game. Yeah, right? man. Yeah, I've seen anything I, like that. His I, game might have been better than Joe Skip for the simple fact he ran, he was running for touchdowns. He was, and the balls were pimped. He was throwing like he was Joe Burrow. I mean, the guy dropped it. He dropped it in the bucket. Just, just <laughs> right here. Even the throw to McConkey when he's open, he just hit him right there. It's hard. You know, sometimes you just see more. They busted the coverage. And remember the guy who had him covered? He threw he the did. one in the corner of the end zone. He just dropped it and right he, in the The ball. guy was holding his arm, and he just dropped it in the and, right and arm. And they were fighting over yes. it, but it was tie goes to the runner, goes to the offensive player. Okay, I'm going to show you one play, because in a 65-7 to game, there's only going to be one turning point play of the game, and it was made by Georgia's quarterback. And the play became, okay, it's 17-7. to Right. And Georgia's got the ball back, but you think, well, maybe if TCU could yeah, get can one stop, yeah. just one stop yeah, here, hold. and it's third and 10 at the TC 45. And I'm thinking, okay, if you could just get the ball back here and go score again, maybe we, we'd have something right. going on. Remember, D. Winters is the best player on defense for TCU, number 13. Team. And you saw what happened against Michigan. He was all Hello. over the yep. field. Yes. He, he dominated yes. the game on defense against Michigan. Okay, so let's see what happened on third and 10 from the fourth. This is 11.35 left in the second quarter. So it's early in the second quarter, and they come max blitz, and, and D. Winters has him dead to rights. And Stetson oh, Bennett goes wide left. And I'm going to read you, if I can find it here, the quick quote from Kirby Smart about this. This is Kirby on this play. Yeah. He says that Stetson saw the max blitz, and he beat the max blitz, and he ran for a first down in one of the biggest plays of the game, which takes a phenomenal athlete. He knew what was coming, and he set the guy up. Yeah. Because he ducked inside He's and then spun. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay? So l let's see it one more time. He it, Listen, D. Winters can play, yeah, and he, yeah. he can move, too. And so here he comes, and he's running free, he's and he's got him. And Stetson spins out and, and ran all the way and then dives for the first down. And when that happened, I was like, okay, that's it. Yep. Because I know what's about to happen. Yep. They're going to go score, and it's going to be 24 to 7. And that just seemed like game over. Yeah. So you okay. agree? I agree with you, Skip. Georgia's a better team. But are they 65 7 better? No, they're just not. It was one of those nights where one team went max and one team went completely, <laughs> utterly oblivion. Yes. Where, where they just. They just didn't show up from the start, nope. and they couldn't get it back on nope. either side of the right. ball. So, to your point, let's look at in in a row. Let's look at Stetson Bennett's four touchdown passes. To your point, th th this man's just out of his mind because you can't get a whole lot better than this to McConkey. This is Lad McConkey. And look, the ball's right. Right, it, it's it's right there. He didn't miss it. Look, this, 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 is the this is the throw. This is the throw. Look at this. What? You can't throw it okay. any better than that. You can't throw it any better, and this one's going to be... Now, throw it this tight end. This tight end's going to have a career yeah. in the NFL, Skip. I don't know if you noticed that, Rock but he, he, yeah, he's going to have a career. I, I just hated he has to go back again. Yeah, I did. he should have... He wish he could have left last year. Yeah, look he, at this. Look at that throw. It, it, this is crazy. L look at this. Here he goes. This is him running. That's the first touchdown. That's the first touchdown. <laughs> I didn't know he had the quicks like this. Yeah. He's that faster just, than you yeah. think. He, he looked pretty quick to me. Yeah. All things considered, I, I thought, and that's why Kirby said after the game, he said, uh, people have slept on Stetson Bennett for too long. He needs an opportunity to play for a long time at the next level. We're going to get deeper into this in a few mm -hmm. minutes here on the show. But, but you know what? 
after the game, he had a point. Well, what threw me a curve was after the Michigan game, the first words out of Kirby's mouth in the on-field interview, right. on which was it on ESPN? I can't remember right. which network he was on, but but he just he just blasted Stetson Bennett the fourth. He he right. said he's if we're going to win this thing, he's got to play better than he played. Oh, you talking about Ohio State? Yeah, the Ohio State game. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah, and yet, yeah. Against Ohio State, I I thought he was pretty good because his numbers against Ohio State were he threw for three ninety eight and three touchdowns. He had one interception. Yes. It was bad. But remember the last drive against Ohio State. He goes five for five and throws a 10-yard pass to Mitchell for the touchdown. It was a 72-yard drive that that won, won the game, game 42 yeah. to 41. Yeah. Well, that's pretty great, yeah. right? Yeah, when you throw for over 700 yards and have like six touchdowns, you, that's a pretty good two-game stretch. Yeah. And and yet Stetson said after the game, when I when I left the field in the game last night, he said that was the first time ever that Kirby had a smile on his face because right. he's been hard on him because yeah. what was he? He was a nobody. Yeah. He tried to walk on, and they said, you're just too little. You right. can't play here. Right. You, you can't even be the fourth string. And he said, okay, I'll go to junior college. And he went and won a championship, came back to Georgia, and they still said, you're a three. You're, you're, you'll be yeah. our three. Right. No, no, I, I can play. Right. And he kept fighting and kept fighting. And then last year he wins the job, and you know the rest of the story. He right. wins back-to-back -back national championships. Well, that's pretty great for a kid who's like 5'11". They list him at 190. I don't think he weighs 190. 190. Yeah, maybe 180. Maybe. But he's Skip, he's in Bulldog lore. When you think of the Georgia, when you think of the Georgia football team, you think of Coach Dooley, you think of Herschel Walker. <sighs> Stetson Bennett is in that lore. Not Kirby Smart is in that lore. Okay. Well, well, Kirby proclaimed after the game that Stetson Bennett has to go down as the greatest player in Bulldog history. You, I, okay, I, well, I, are you going to? I mean, Herschel is Herschel. Yeah, right. And forget about Herschel off the uh, field yeah. for a moment, if you yeah. will, please. Yeah. Just what he did on the field for them. You want to talk about legendary? He was unbelievable. I mean, to me, he, he was, was unbelievable. As a freshman, freshman, he was unbelievable. A true freshman, yes. Right? As yes. a true freshman, yes. you want to talk about man. Yes. He was a man. He was. And the, the point is, when I think of Georgia football, I, I think, just think, think of him. Herschel. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and I think a little bit of Matthew Stafford, but he never won there. No. He was the first pick in the draft. No, give that, you know what? I won't fight you. If somebody says Stetson Bennett is the best college football player in UGA history, I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to get on no soapbox and say, nah, it's Herschel, it's Herschel, it's Herschel. That man just won two back-to-back -back national championships, and he was the most outstanding player in both games. So what's your, what's your argument? I understand Herschel had an NFL career. I understand how talented. He was six foot two, 225 pounds, and could run 4'3". Sure. I get all of that, sure. but he only won one national championship. That man won two, and he only lost one game in those two years. Back to back, and we know how hard that is to how hard it is to win back to back national championships, especially in this era when guys leave college, they don't stay all four years like they used to. Yeah. And you look at it, Skip, they lost 15 players to the NFL draft, five more than any other team. And guess what? They got a boatload leaving again. They do. That's the the, the <laughs> issue became that you had so many stars leave, but you had blue chips waiting in the yeah. wings. And the blue chips had chips on their shoulders yes. that the, that those kids wouldn't yes. have had if yes. they were coming back to to skip the backups repeat. are five stars. Yeah. You better make it seem like the backups are walk on. No, the backups are five stars. No, they lost five guys on defense that were first round picks. Five. And guess what? They probably got three or four more that's going to be first round pick. Because I like the kid Jalen Carter. So now, do I. He, I. I need to see a little bit of motor. Yeah. I need to see a little bit of motor. I think I, that's going to be the, that's going to be the knock on him is motor. Yeah. But as far as talent, he has it. Okay. So what did Kirby keep talking about after the game? People doubted us all year. Well, the, the truth is nobody really they, – they were picked third in the preseason poll. Okay. Doubt? Well, I mean, nobody You went really TCU. Doubted. They no. didn't pick the finish seventh in the conference. Right. They were 200 <laughs> to 1 before the year to win the national championship. So he said people doubted us, and he managed to convince his team at every step they don't believe in you. Well, Coach, last night you were only a 13-and-a-half-point favorite. Yeah. OK, and you won 65 to seven and nobody was doubting you coming into the game. Some people were picking TCU to cover, cover. you know, like it seemed yeah, like a lot of points. TCU. I didn't hear anybody pick uh, 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 even Mattress Mac. He bet three million dollars that did. they were going to cover. That was the biggest yeah. said, Thank you. After what you did to us in the baseball playoffs. Yeah. But skip, skip. I mean, when you look at when you look at Georgia and you look at what they're building, it's it sure seems like Alabama ish. When Coach Saban got there. Well, for and, sure. And then all of a sudden, it's national championship, national championship, national championship, national championship, national championship. 
That's what it looks like. Now, the, the, the backup quarterback that came in, I don't know his classifications. I don't know if he's coming back. But if you if you get a quarterback, because that's what Alabama was able to do. They were able to get these quarterbacks. They got Tua. They got Bryce Young. And so, uh, uh, and uh, uh, Matt Jones. Yep. So you're able to keep it going. But the thing is, Skip, when you got 12, 15, 25, four and five stars around, yep. your quarterback don't need to be a five star. Yep. He don't need to be a four star. He can be a, a, a walk on and play with all those five stars. Yep. And you'll get that. Okay. I agree. Then Kirby made one other statement last night about, about entitlement. How He said, when entitlement creeps in, you've got a problem. So these kids were so fresh and new to this, nobody felt entitled because none of them had really contributed that much to what happened a year ago. Right. So you had an, a new mix of, of talent right. with chips on shoulder and no entitlement. Right. And by the way, when he said entitlement creeps in, and I, I started, my mind wandered to my favorite pro football team, yeah. my Cowboys. suddenly stumbling Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> because it just seems like they haven't won anything, but doesn't it seem like they play with entitlement? They sort of carry themselves with entitlement? Well, because, yeah, because why? They're on America's team. They are. So that, then, gets, that gets passed. Your America's team gets passed down, even though you didn't do anything to build that, that, right. that moniker. All, all, all they hear is, we're the most valuable franchise yeah. in all the world, mm -hmm. so we're entitled. We're America's team, but you, you haven't done anything to deserve right. being America's team, but that's a whole other issue. Okay, now, just for a moment, I do have to defend the conference I grew up in, even though I went to school in the <laughs> SEC. And by the way, just for the record, you grew up in Georgia, so you know all about Georgia football. I, I do. Because I'm sure there was a part of you that wanted to go to Georgia, and there was a, mm -hmm. a moment when you thought you were going to yes. Georgia. Yes. Okay, so you get that. I do. I get the Big 12, because I grew up in Oklahoma, Oklahoma fan, and it With used to be the Big 8. It used to be the Big 8. But it's had a reputation as a pass-first conference yeah. and running as optional, defense is optional. Right. Okay. So I, I do have to defend one, one moment that did happen in 2017 when we were on the show together. Baker Mayfield and Lincoln Riley right. and company played Georgia, yeah. Kirby Smart's mm -hmm. Georgia, out here in the Rose Bowl right. in the national semifinal. And we did at least take them to double yes. overtime. And the final score was 54 to 48. Baker threw for 287 and a couple of touchdowns. Did have one interception. But uh, Rodney Anderson, you won't remember, but he ran for 201 yards for us. And Hollywood Brown caught eight for 114. You do know who yeah. he is, obviously. Yep. And then on the other side, Nick Chubb is going for 145 and Sony Michelle is going for 181. <laughs> Two touchdowns and three touchdowns, respectively. Right. Okay, so they're running a track meet right. on my defense because it was terrible. Right. But on talent, my offense was talented enough to hang with, with Georgia's overall talent right. on both sides of the ball because we did go up and down the field and the final yards for the game was Oklahoma had 531 to Georgia's 527. So we barely out yarded right. them, but they beat us in the second overtime. Right. Okay. So just for the record, I had one team that hung in right. with a very good Georgia team. But the thing is, now, Skip, you haven't had that level of talent at Oklahoma since, no. and Georgia has just kept they, building. Well, and well building I, I think they're. Building. Better than yeah. they were. Then. Oh yeah, because I think the quarterback is better than what they had. I don't know who the quarterback was. Jake yeah. Fromm. I think it was Jake Fromm. Yeah, and it's just better. He, yeah. he was just he's Stetson just a B guy to yeah. me. And okay. Stetson Bennett, and like I said, Skip, it's going to be to lose 15 guys and you back undefeated Whew. for the national championship. And a lot of these games weren't close. The only, the close what the close game they played was Ohio State. Everything else was a blowout. Everything else was double digit. So it was, it felt like some passing of the torch because Coach Saban last night was on the ESPN pregame show yeah. on the panel. And I'm thinking, are you segueing? Are you, do, do you enjoy this? <laughs> nah. do, you, do you like it? Do you, he looked great. Yeah. And, and he was funny. He told some funny stories. He's, so. uh, he had, they have the second best odds. Georgia has the best odds. And Bama has the second best odds. Okay. Well, it's all, Bama's going to be dependent on that, the quarterback. Because we know Bryce Young is going. Will Anderson is going. they got a couple of other guys. They've had about four or five, six guys that was in, tra in transfer portal. A lot of them going to TCU. A tackle, a running back. There's been a pipeline to yeah. TCU. I don't really know what happened, yeah. but they, they are. They could have used them last night, I think. Boy, it just looks like the balance of power has shifted slightly to Georgia. Oh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, Skip. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I, I don't think nobody's doubting that. Coach, well, Saban, Coach Saban might say otherwise, but nah. I, I would agree. So, final thought. Congratulations to TCU on a great year. It's, it's hard to do what they did. I ain't telling from. nobody I went to TCU. Yeah. Man, after that, skip 65 to 7. No, but they That's got the most there. lopsided of a top three team in the history.
Well, they were victims of the greatest championship game <laughs> performance <laughs> we have ever seen, yeah. right? Okay, so I, I congratulate them. And remember, Max Duggan lost the job in, in preseason camp, right. in, in August camp. Right. He lost the job and only because of an injury to the right. other kid. He got his shot, and then he comes close to winning the right. Heisman Trophy. Sorry, okay. Ash. Yeah. She sent me the little crying I emoji, Skip. I wish. Well, it's just terrible. <laughs> but, but listen, for TCU to get there is a major achievement. Yeah. I know who did. I thought you told me Oklahoma was going to be there. They were off to a great start. Yeah. And so did a bunch of national commentators, including several on this network, were gloating about Oklahoma is back under Brent Venables. Y'all and then it's worse than old Lincoln. Then guess what happened? TCU happened. Oh, Lane. That, that was the first day I said, uh-oh. Oh, Lane going to have, to have USC right next year, though. Well, is Old he? Old Lincoln. Yeah. Well, you mean the guy who can't <laughs> stop anybody, just like play, at Oklahoma? They can't play any defense. Huh. They lost to Tulane. Huh. Well, they got the Grinch who stole New Year's at, as their <laughs> defensive coordinator. They better get another yeah. one. Yeah. Better go get somebody out of Georgia staff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what they should do, Skip. That's true. <laughs> It was a very different TCU team, guys, than the one that we saw beat Michigan, that's for sure. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Subscribe here to get the very latest from Skip and Shannon. Plus, go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.